Mark L. Wahlberg, the host of Temptation Island. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Danny and I are so excited to have you because we are, we're, you know, in the thick of all the Temptation Island drama. So we have a lot to catch up on. How has it been sort of watching this season back? Well, I'm glad you have a lot to catch up on because I have nowhere to be till like November. So we can talk as long as you can. <laughs> Done. Uh, it, Amazing. It's great, it's great to see the show on the air again. You know, we shot it several months ago and people don't believe this, but I don't know what's going to happen because I, I really do the bonfires. And then my wife and I, every Wednesday, turn on the show and we're watching and you see it's just kind of on the couch. Go, oh, my God. <laughs> so it's um, it's fun to watch. Wait, that's it must be so fun to watch and to watch back because me and Evan were talking like. You're not only full on host duties, we feel so many times you're kind of like a therapist to everybody there. How do you balance that? And did you did you know that? I know you've been doing that. Did you know that was going to be part of the hosting of Temptation Island? So didn't. <laughs> and balance is cute that you think I have some. <laughs> but I'll tell you, uh, like that origin story, is that, um, you know, we did the show back in 2001, originally on Fox. And I did what I know how to do. And nobody knew what reality TV was. So we had producers who were like, we had this concept, but just go do your thing. And so we were just winging it. And then now 20 years later, so the show comes back. So I only know how to do like one thing. I only know how to play me. I can't, I'm not a particularly great actor. So when we got on the show, there were 20 years of reality TV shows with talent that the, all the crew and staff were used to working with and how they work. And I showed up and I had no clue how that went down. And so I was just doing me. And when things would come up, I'd be in a conversation. I would say what came to mind. And they were like, season two came up and they're like, you, you need to do that thing you do. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and I had said to them, look, I'm going to say a bunch of stuff, but cut me out of the show and keep the stuff that's good for the show. But don't, please don't make this about me. But I would get in these conversations and as it has gone into season five, there's been a response that they like to hear a little bit of that. But I caution everybody to say, look, I'm not a therapist. I need therapy. I'm in therapy, but I'm not a therapist. But I am, you know, I'm older and I've lived a little life and I've got the, uh, some relationship experience. And more importantly, I'm willing to just listen to you and let's talk it out. Let's just put words to feelings and see what comes there. And so it's kind of evolved, but it was not intentional. Uh, the support I have from my executive producer and everybody else to go there, I think is one of the reasons why the show is different. You know, there is this sort of underlying vibe that as messy as the show is, there is this sort of directive and collective to leave the people that come on the show in a better place when they leave, even okay. in all the chaos. The journey of Temptation Island is so wild. It's so crazy to think that it was on the air in 2001. Now it's back in full force. You are still involved. When you look back on where the show started, where it is now, how do you describe the evolution? And, and what do you think has been the the, the biggest change uh, that the show has experienced in this new era? Great question. Um, the show itself has not changed very much at all. We've gotten rid of some of the shtick you know, date selections and vote offs done as big pieces. You know, now we just let them vote them off when they want to vote them off. You know, we say today's a vote off, but we don't have to do a whole thing. Right. Um, so I like that, that it's organic, organically uh, evolved in that direction. But reality TV has changed and societally we have changed. So things like judgment of people's sexual appetite, while the viewers still have it, we don't, you know, I don't. So the old days of like the guys doing their thing and the girls are sluts for doing what they're doing. Mm. It's just not, it's not right. It's not relevant. So I, I like that we have watched reality TV and that there is a generation of people that share their intimate stuff. And there is a societal shift of acceptance while we don't necessarily see it politically all the time. Uh, I think that in the younger audience that there's an acceptance of people's journey and how they get there is how they get there. And, and so I like to stand in that, like, you know, all right, so what seems to be outrageous behavior to some is just behavior and it works for them or doesn't work for them. And if it's not working, then they get to discover it, but we don't get to say, you shouldn't do that, you know? Mm. So I, I, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like that really goes, especially on a show like Temptation Island, where so much of it is about 
relationships and sex and how people react. And I feel like just the topic of that from 2001 to now has evolved so much. And it's funny because has it evolved or are people just being more honest now about what, like, and what you can oh. say, you know what I mean? Oh, that's it. The yeah. truth is everybody did whatever they did always <laughs> and lied about it. <laughs> and now through Instagram and and all of the vehicles that, you know, sexuality mm -hmm. is something that is not a mystery, that everybody enjoys it. Relationship is difficult today as it was in Shakespeare's time. And, <laughs> but the difference is that, I, I, I've been trying to write something about this because I'm of the boomer generation, but the Gen Z generation that the boomers love to malign, I actually <laughs> am a student of. Okay, well, we're we're millennials, so we're right in the middle, right. yeah. and yeah. we think you're the coolest boomer around, by the way. Yes, I hate using the phrase boomer because I I <laughs> identify as a different generation. You're Gen Z, <laughs> but I just think that there's languaging and 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 general uh, way of being that is emotionally intelligent in, in millennials and and Gen Z and beyond, where those things that were taboo to talk about we don't just talk about, we embrace. Like there was a time where going to therapy was something you didn't tell anybody, oh. right? Now, if you don't go, you don't tell somebody, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like you have a, you have a, you have a, a mandate, you have a, a responsibility to grow yourself up emotionally, um, to be healthy and happy in, in what is a very toxic world we live in all the time. So I, I, I just think that's a lot of the evolution here is we share what's going on. We talk about what's going on and we don't hide in shame of the things that we love, like what our kinks are, what our things are, we get to have. Right. I mean, and you've probably learned so much from working on the show and hosting the show and speaking to so many people over the years. Is there anything that you've discovered about yourself, about relationships in general that you have brought into your own life, your own marriage, even the relationships you have with your friends, your kids? Like, I feel like there's probably just like a, a new wealth of knowledge that you have ascertained. I think I'm learning all the time. And and one of the things I say to to uh, the people on the show is that when I say something that sounds like I'm really about you and I'm focusing and, and it's really wise, my experience is that when, when something comes out of my mouth that's evoked by the person I'm talking to, while it may help them, it was really there for me to remind myself. So I'm constantly, it's whatever I'm saying to them and watching these young relationships struggle is checking myself in my own relationship. Hey, I'm saying some good shit here, but am I applying that? And luckily, my wife is there on the island with me, and um, and she's there simply because she's my girl. But she's also a font of incredibly inspired emotional intelligence. So much of what I say on the show is stuff that she said to me, and I've been resistant to hear. So what I love is I'll say whatever, and I'll come off a bonfire, and for people experiencing it, they're like, oh, that was amazing. I'm like, thank you. And Robbie's like, that was amazing. But this wasn't. Uh, you know, and <laughs> how about exploring this? And did you feel this? And you kind of missed this. And what were you, you know? And so that's that's what relationships should be is there's one person that, you know, I go back to this point. There's really only one thing we as humans need from other humans. We constantly need to know that we're seen and we're heard, oh, I think. We don't need to be fixed. We don't need judgment. We don't need solution. We really just want you to know we're here and we're suffering or we're joyful. And so Robbie sees me and hears me. And so um, that allows me to go do my thing. And then she can say to me, whatever. So we're in a constant conversation about relationship in our life. It's something we, it's like a hobby for us. And if I can bring that to the show and people are digging it, then cool. And if not, I'm just that obnoxious old uncle. <laughs> Wait, I love you saying that the relationship is like both work and a hobby and what you guys do, because I feel that really is such an emphasis that you guys are putting like active thought and care into it. And it almost seems like the show helps you guys grow your relationship too. I, I think, yes, yes, that's true. But I think that if you're in a conversation of we don't take our relationship for granted, and a place where we're allowed to express even the dark stuff without fear of the other person walking out of the house, then everything is a lesson because relationships are fluid and never fixed. 
And and I, I say that in all candor, I don't think anybody gets in a relationship and like, you know, in week three, they figure it out and live a blissful life for the rest of their life. The human condition is to have self-doubt, self-loathing, ego. I'm going to, I'm going to like try to control you. You're going to try to control me. And this is where things break up for, for us. We have one commitment, which is we are very clear that neither one of us will survive very well without the other. Whether we like or love each other at the moment, we know that we kind of need to be together. Mm-hmm. So that gives us the the leeway to go, you know, I can't stand you right now, but let's talk through this, Aww. right? And, <laughs> and so that's you know, love. I love. That is love. Now, having had this successful marriage for so many years, hosting Temptation Island for for all these seasons what do you think of modern day relationships like are are people too picky are they too scared of commitment are they like what what do you notice about current dating trends i i think that they're actually not necessarily as current as they are um universal Mm. but the trap we get into when looking for that person often is the too picky thing is there So I ask not what the things are, but why the things. This is where it's tricky because we need to hold ourselves with the value of that. I don't want to settle. I want, I get to have a full life of love. But the question is when you're trying to look at that stuff is why are, why have you written off other people? Is it that you are self-sabotaging so that you don't get into relationship or are these actually things that matter? And And so one of the things I'm talking about on the show all the time is that in every relationship where we say the words, I love you, we think we do. But every single new relationship, we have a new definition. We thought it was love. Like in middle school, I was in love pretty much every day, right? (laughs) Yes. By high school, love was a little bit deeper. By college, it was deeper than that. And then when I really got my heart broken, I'm like, okay, this this word, you got to hold on, right? Mm -hmm. So- one of the there there are a couple of things that I always get concerned about. One is getting your shit together before you get in a relationship. Real is a horrible idea. Okay, because that's going to take forever. No that's one gets their shit together. Yeah, that's right. our destination. <laughs> right, and we need partnership. Mm. And so I always say, don't wait till you get your shit together. Get your shit together. So like what happens in relationships sometimes is like guys will say, I don't want to get married until my career is together, my house is together. And my wife and I got married with, I had no job when I walked down the aisle and no degree. So everything I have, including these dogs, everything you see, all the things are a we, not a mine and hers. So that's a fallacy that you got to get your shit together before you can be together. And then the thing I see a lot with women, and I hate to go gender specific, but you'll apply it. It, it, it can be in, it, it's, it's not a man, woman thing. It, it, it's just a thing is that we feel like we need to be a certain person in the dating process. Mm-hmm. And I get the question, when do I get to be me? I'm afraid he's going to leave. When do I, like, I'm wearing the ponytail. I'm eating the wings. I'm pretending to like football. Yeah, I got the sweatshirt on. I'm doing all the things. When do I get to actually be a little bit bougie? Like, when does that happen? Yeah, oh, amen, yes. And I'm like, well, the problem is you're selling and not buying here, Mm. right? You're selling. I hope he approves of this fake me to the point where I got my hooks in. As opposed to what if I held myself in the value that I really don't need another person because all is good and can be enhanced by the right person coming along. So, and I, I'm constantly telling people you're never broken, but the thing that you think is broken that you're hiding one, you're not hiding it. We see it. And two, that's the thing that I fall in love with. That thing that you're still working on that you haven't figured out is why partnership is good. That gives me purpose to be in your life. You have troubles here. I want to let you know, I see it. I hear it. And let's, do it together that doesn't scare me so i know you i know you say you're not a therapist but it's really feeling like you have your phd no you were taking (laughs) us to charge and also i feel you need to teach like dating classes to people because i need more marks in the world thank you but as my wife has taught me and every time i say it i hear myself sound like borat my wife my wife (laughs) yeah but as as she gave me a quote 
that I put in the show and they keep cutting out of the show because it's too heady, but it's a Ram Das quote that says, the only thing in relationship, the only thing that I can do for you is work on me. And the only thing you can do for me is work on you. I can't change you. You can't change me. But together, we can accept who we are and give space for change. Oh. Right? Give space for you. I, I don't need you to change. I'll take the warts and all. And yeah. if you want to, to evolve in a certain way, I'm willing to be your ride or die on that. Yeah. That's right? so real. Do you, yeah. I mean, you, I'm you, a mess, but my wife accepts all of that because a lot of it's good and some of it's a pain in the ass. But the stuff that's really difficult for me is where she's strong. Mm. She There's a say, great Beyonce song, Flaws and All. I feel it's really summing this up. It hits. <laughs> yeah, Beyonce. Let's just take a moment. She, I mean, I'm gonna I'm flying to LA cross country to see her. So I'm taking that moment. I I had a moment where I physically touched her by mistake. What? I what? can't even. I can't even. No, you need to. I, yeah, I'm having a business meal at the Bel Air Hotel, I think, which is not my neighborhood. So I'm okay. already a little uncomfortable. Like we're sitting at a table. I'm trying to be cool, but I'm not. And as I walked in, it was the day after the Oscars. As I walked in, by the way, I make eye contact with Common, who had just won. And I gave him like, you know, what's up? And he gave me a <laughs> chin like, OK, so we're cool. And I'm like, that just happened. And so I'm talking a mile a minute, which I'm sure is not a stretch for you to understand. And we finish our meeting. And of course, as we're finishing our meeting, I'm walking backwards, still in the meeting, talking. And I turn really quickly and bump into this woman. And I'm holding her like, oh, sorry, ma'am. And it's be fucking Anse, right? Well, oh, in my so hands. Like, what what was like, her reaction? Well, she was like, it's OK, baby. And I, I, of course, let go immediately. And then turned around to walk away. And Jay-Z's right there. So I'm like. I, this is both the worst and greatest moment of my life <laughs> happening. So, oh my God. I love that. Going like this. <laughs> probably never wash your hands. Oh, probably if Beyonce them. said it's okay, baby to me, I have tears just imagining that I would, I, I'd be done. I'd be like, it is okay. It was kind of a transcendent. I took that to be everything is okay. Yes. No, it's like, it's like receiving a blessing from a saint. Truly. That's right. That's right. It's like I bathed in holy water. It just happened. Yeah. So, but wait, speaking speaking of Beyonce and Jay-Z, that makes me think of, you know, institutional celebrity couples as someone who works in Hollywood, someone who hosts a show about relationships. Is there any sort of celebrity couple that you think, in your opinion, is goals like these guys are built to last? They have it going on like you just really are feeling them as a couple. There are a lot of them that I really love. Um, lately, Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. Oh, they're really sweet. They keep posting songs together and they've been married as long as we have. So I, and I dig that about them. And I think that's great. Younger couples. Um, gosh, you know, like, I, I don't know, like you got to throw some at me. I, there's some that I've really. Like Zendaya really, and Tom Holland, everybody loves to pieces. They're cute. The way they look at each other says it all, doesn't it? It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just, I love that. I was really rooting for Chelsea Handler and, and uh, Joe Coy. I, I was too. I thought they were really cute. I was devastated. When I they... love how she talks about love after him though. It seems like yeah. it was a really good relationship for them, but I want them to rekindle. Well, first of all, I think I love Joe Coy. I think there's just something <laughs> so sweet about him that I just, yeah. I, I, I love, and I love Chelsea Handler. I love all that she is, even the caustic abrasive. I love to chat with her about it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think she's come to terms with what love is for her. I, I, you know, I follow her on Twitter and Instagram and all that. So I enjoy that. You know, there are a lot of couples out there that I root for. I root for almost all of them. And then the ones that are not like you can sense it's not good. I mean, can't we all just sense it? Can't we all just sense things like that? We sense Who are we sensing? I'm trying to think. Well, I'm happy for JLo and Ben. Love that. It came back around. Are you happy for them? I am. Okay. I, Are I you sensing because, any hesitations for them? Well, yes. I mean, both of them have some relatively, check, relatively checkered past. And as the kids would say, there might be some red flags there and some behavior in the past. But we have to give space for an agency too that there's growth. And when people who were together find themselves again, yeah. right? There's a lot that could be there. It's like the... For that to happen means that both have had to put ego aside and the right and wrong aside to recognize some truths that while we may not have been ready for each other then, we're still drawn and we'll, let's, let's work it out. 
what is the best way for them to avoid potential problems that may have been, you know, ultimately the result of their breakup in the early 2000s? Like what advice would you give them to to really make it work this time for the long run? I think the advice I'd give to anybody in that situation is that relationship is difficult and the things that plagued you before will plague you again. Mm. It's, it, things repeat. Your relationship to those things, however, is something you have control over. And the dial of one to 10, you have control over. So forgiveness, tolerance, and walk, don't run in relationship is your friend. So you're going to piss each other off. The same and by the way, the thing that had you leave before, whatever triggered you before, had very little to do with them, but has everything to do with your past relationships repeated over and over again. That's true. So if we can remember when we get triggered and we get angry and we start pointing fingers, that in fact, play the game for a moment that it's never the other person. So while their behavior and reaction may be true and factual, how you react to it, what it means to you is usually a soap opera you've created and has nothing to do with them, has very much to do with your childhood and the things that you've yet to resolve. So every time something comes up like that, that's an opportunity in a relationship to say, wow, this is what's happening for me. I have to intellectually remind myself that it has very little to do with you. So can you help me? Can we talk it out? And mo by the way, Relationship problems are disproportionate to physics. Physics says the further away from a mountain I am, the smaller it looks. And the closer I get to it, the bigger it looks. The problems are opposite. The, the faster you run to the problem, the smaller it gets and actually becomes a mirage often. It's not to say that we don't have problems, but you got to walk to them, not away from them. They don't get smaller. They get bigger the further you get away. Benefer, I hope you're listening. I hope. I hope they are taking notes because I'm rooting for them, but it's, it kind of reminded me like when I stopped shopping at a store and I'm like, let me go back there. And I'm like, the pants still don't fit, but it seems like it's better for hmm. them. You know? Okay. I mean? And in the first two weeks of that reconciliation, the pants aren't going to fit. And hopefully you have that. What we talked about valuing yourself to say, you know, I'm trying this again, but why am I trying this again? Why is it that I, I don't want to fail. So I'm going to go back and fix something that I thought was a failure. Or do I, is that coming back together? And we're seeing this a little bit with Hall and um, see how I brought this back yeah. with Hall and uh, and with Caitlin that they had a relationship, they broke up and now he came back and now there's still problems. So will they transcend that? Do you, you know, think they will? That, Are, do, you, do you think they will? Are you rooting for them to transcend that? I will give you the statement I say to all of the couples when they come to the island because I don't want to do any spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> I say, one, You'll tell me why you came on the show about relationship. And I'll tell you that it's partly that and partly that you want, you know, collabs and followers and, and business. Okay. And the route to both of those is the same. So I don't have a problem. <laughs> the route to both of those is being authentic. True. If you're authentic followers, follow you on Instagram. And if you're authentic in a relationship, you have a chance to make it. So I say to them, while you think this is a TV show, it isn't for me. It's real. And it will be real. It will become, it gets very real very quickly. So the sooner you lean into that, the better. And the more the juice there is to get out of that orange. But let me be clear. I'm an advocate for all of you leaving this island. All eight of you leaving the island in a better place. Mm. And then they go, yay. And then I go, but be clear. I didn't say four couples. I have no investment in you as a couple. Okay. I have none. Yeah. Yeah. I have investment in you as a person. Mm. and separately and if and i even go further to say in my opinion on that first night while you're going i hope our relationship lasts i'm saying you've already broken up because at the end of this experience both of you won't be the same person so mm -hmm. either you will find each other in a new space and be in love with this new version and that new relationship will have legs and go or you'll realize that it never really was and you need something else Interesting. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that holds a lot of weight. But you know, right before Danny and I got on zoom with you, we were talking about Mauricio and Kyle Richards from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and how they might benefit from going on <laughs> Temptation Island. So that's funny, because I had a whim that might have been, you know, you know, alcohol influence that I said, to my wife, I said, you know, wouldn't it? I think I was watching um, 
an episode of The Bachelor, which I never do. And it was the first night of meeting all the girls. And one girl kept breaking in and going, you know, I want to give you another shot. I want to give another shot. And she was the first one who didn't get a rose and she was gone. And I said, oh, I, I need her in my palm fire. If I could just talk to her for a minute. And so I had this concept. Wouldn't it be cool if anyone on any reality show, when they're voted off or in trouble, teleports and all of a sudden they're at a bonfire and I get to talk to them. Yes. So that's something I, uh, I okay. So if, if Mauricio and Kyle teleported to your bonfire, what would you tell them? Because their situation is very unique. I don't know if you've been keeping up. With I haven't. So give me some quick background and I'll give you a take. Okay. So Kyle and Mauricio, they're on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. They have been on TV since forever. They've been married for 27 years. They have, a, they are like you and Robbie, they are an institution. People love them. They were them. an impenetrable couple. Yes. yes. And so then this report came out that they had separated and split. And then there were rumors of like them getting a divorce, but then they released a statement hours later saying, we're not getting a divorce. We just experienced like the hardest year of our marriage and we're figuring out what to do, how to move forward just sort of, you know, get, getting their bearings. And then they spent the 4th of July together with their family. They put up a united front. So it seems to be this sort of like vacillating, like, are we together? Are we not together? They are, they're clearly going through it and just trying to figure it out. And I feel like they could figure it out at a bonfire with our boy, Mark L. Wahlberg. Well, I hope they figure it out wherever they are. And I can relate. And when we see other people's relationships through Instagram and television, we mm -hmm. see them in two dimensions. We don't see the third dimension, which is that all relationships take work and are effortless sometimes and are challenged and hopeless sometimes. And it's your commitment to that relationship and your ability to call back to the, the foundations that matter and the things that don't. So I can relate to this being the hardest year of our relationship, even if they're in decades long. And I can relate to us seeing them in Fourth of July going, well, everything's okay. So we're putting out, look, think of it as far as Instagram filters go. Rarely do influencers show you actually what they look like. It's filter. Mm -hmm. And more. so think of filters as our projection on what we see. So they'll share their little bit, a photo or a reel. And we're like, that's the story. Well, what they're copying to is that even in those institution relationships, the ones that we hold up as goals with a Z, um, they're not without their own trouble. And that trouble isn't, you don't get to a point where you've solved it. Like 10 years of marriage, it's covered. Because life, I'm learning now, man, I'm, I'm heading into a chapter in my life that I, I can't relate to the number, right? I still feel 30. And my wife and I play like we're 30. And we're like, fuck, we're going to retire. Where's the money? What are we going to do? Oh, shit. And I'm like, well, we're never going to retire. We're just going to figure it out. And if we have to eat cat food, we'll eat cat food together. That's just how we're going to retire. I'm glad you're not stealing your dog's dog food. No, I can't afford to eat what they eat. I'm just going <laughs> to let you know right now. I can't afford what these poodles have. <laughs> the, the thing to remember is that no one's immune to emotion. And no one is exempt from growth and or devolving. Mm. And what I see a lot of times in couples as they get into their decades is that they just find the comfortable place and become roommates. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, you got to roll your sleeves up. And if you got to separate for a minute to find your, that's, what's interesting about temptation Island. It's extreme and it's not advised, but that's exactly what they're doing is a separation is like, let me get, let me get back centered to who I am as an individual. Yeah. Like, what am I not getting? Why am I feeling? I don't get it. So that I can come back and talk about that and either make a request or let it go. So I have All right. Well, Danny and I are manifesting Kyle and Mauricio on the next season of Temptation Island. I mean, it's all part of the NBCU family. So it's happening out there. <laughs> I like your manifestation. I'm 100% in support of you too, manifesting stuff for us. That's great. Oh, we will be doing it daily. And I'll be seeing you at the Beyonce concert because- you're friends with her now. So uh, I, I we're having you at the end. I like this. So, I mean. <laughs> oh my God, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. This was so much fun. We appreciate thank you. you. It's not a, at all the interview I expected, but I think that goes to what we've been talking about. I thought I was promoting the show and stuff. So watch the show if you can, but. Yes. Honest, tell, I, tell our listeners well, actually, yeah. when and where they can watch Temptation yeah. Island. Uh, so uh, Wednesdays at nine on USA Network. 
followed by the big D with Jojo and Jordan. So let's love. give them some love because I love them. And it did not stand for what I thought it stand stood for. Cause I saw the promo. You, they also quizzed you on that. It was a yes, different, but I think if you, depending on the episode, it does stand for that occasionally. Oh, um, okay. Now yeah, that's the tune that episode. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everything lives on two levels and then we're on Peacock uh, the next day. So you can stream everything on Peacock. So uh, do that. And but, the twist this upcoming season or so in like this current season with the new twist is very crazy. And I know you were hesitant about them at first, but I yeah. love it. Yes. I think uh, when we see this temptation light start to blink in the next episode or two, it's going to get nuts. And I was so against that because I'm like, it seems like a contrived bullshit thing. But the truth is it plays right into what we're creating here is that yeah. you have no idea or control over the other person. Not what is the facts there, but how does it make you feel? Because that's where all the answers are. So true. So we're going to get to blinking. <laughs> <laughs> I love chatting with you guys. And, uh, and uh, it was an unexpected deep conversation, but I'm thrilled to have had it. I honestly, thank you so much. Like that was, I could listen to you talk for hours, which it, I guess it, it is what you do, but you had like such good insight. We loved it. Thank no, you. I mean, like Thanks you say, you want, you want these Islanders to like sort of leave the experience feeling like a better, per like I feel like I yes. am a better person after this conversation. I feel a little bit better too. My son laughs so hard. Uh, and so he makes me laugh so hard. He'll send me like memes that he creates, which is like me at the bonfire saying something and him saying, this was my entire childhood. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I mean, that, that is so perfect. So good. So good. Bless All right, Mark. Bless. Anyway, thanks you guys. Thank you so thank much. You. I look forward to us chatting again and hit me up, DM me. If you got questions, I'm, I'm down to talk. Okay, perfect. Sounds we good. We will be. <laughs>